Welcome to the Seniors Rock Show, presented by the Law Office of Michael Robinson, PC, on News Radio, Wham 1180. The Seniors Rock Show, a lively weekly discussion, shedding a bright light on aging with fun, entertainment, and important info for all adults. Join in with your comments or questions. Call or text 222 1180 or 1 800 295 1180. Now, from the News Radio, Wham 1180 studio in downtown Rochester, here's your host. Joanna Palvino. Welcome to the Seniors Rock Show. I am Joanna, your host, and I'm here with my co-host, attorney Mike Robinson, and we are both looking forward to the next hour with you and also with our guest today, that is author Amy Cameron O'Rourke. And Amy is an aging expert, and uh, she's got a lot of experience, and she's going to give us some tips for that hot topic of this time of year, family time, and the holidays are approaching, so we thought this would be a good topic. She wrote, uh, Amy did, The Fragile Year. She's going to tell us about that, and that includes uh, in this book, Proven Strategies for the Care of Aging, loved ones. And I think uh, I know quite a few people who are, uh, you know, caregivers and and uh, caring for loved ones, aging parents and loved ones. And I think uh, this is going to be a great show. So I'm looking forward to it. She'll be sharing some examples for us of, mista- of mistakes to avoid uh, this holiday season when you're talking to an older parent about the future. And Mike, I thought about you when we talked about this topic. And um, I know talking about the future is something you must do every day with families as an estate planning attorney, right? Hey, yes. Hey, Joanna, happy Saturday. And yes, I, that's exactly what we talk about. In fact, one of the things I love about estate planning is that it allows people to create their future uh, as well as to create their family's future and not be stuck with a, a default and uns, unsatisfactory future. Um, and speaking of the future, we're getting a reminder right now of what the near future holds. We're getting some snow. I can't believe it. We're not getting it on this side of town <laughs> unless I, it's not over my house, but I don't see any. No, no I, did. I think it's pretty, pretty localized and, and they tell us nothing to worry about, but you know what's coming. Yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes by the lake, it's warmer at this time of year because the the lake is still warm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you probably won't uh, won't see it. But uh, but, you know, thinking about the future and creating the future, as I said, that is one of the neat things that uh, that estate planning allows people to do. And uh, and we got an interesting question uh, this week uh, that I thought I would I would answer on the air. And it was uh, from a fellow named Neville from Gates. And he was saying he was having coffee with some friends and uh, he would mention that he and his wife needed to update their wills and that his friends told him, well, no, you should do a, a living trust. And so Neville's question is, is, is that true? Should I really be doing a living trust? And Neville, before I answer the question, let me just kind of look at, you know, what are some of the reasons why peop- uh, so many people use a living trust as the centerpiece of their estate plan. You know, for one thing, the a living trust does allow you to give authority to another person to handle your financial affairs if you become unable to do so. And and without doing any planning to address that situation, uh, you'll wind up in court in an expensive and stressful guardianship proceeding. Now, a durable power of attorney is another way to plan for incapacity, but too often those documents either don't convey sufficient authority or they're too often rejected by financial institutions for for all kinds of different reasons. And so uh, a properly drafted living trust avoids all of those problems. Second, a living trust allows you to transfer your assets at death in a way that provides significant protection for your family without the need for a lengthy and expensive probate proceeding. And and it allows you to do all of those things with no adverse tax consequences and with no loss of control or, or flexibility. So Neville, to your question, you know, a living trust is, is a powerful estate planning tool and it is appropriate for a great many people But whether it's an appropriate tool for you depends on a number of factors, 
uh, including what exactly are you trying to accomplish with your estate plan. And, and really a great place to start looking into whether a living trust might be appropriate is to attend one of our free webinars um, because we, we cover the different options available for people. Um, what are the issues that those different options are looking to, uh, to solve? And it just helps give a good grounding in what the considerations are, and that'll help you decide what type of plan is really going to be best for you and, and your family. Very good. And, uh, you know, being educated about your options is so important. I've learned that from you, and we talk about it every week here on the show, uh, Mike. You're an expert in estate planning, and, um, you know, learning from you what the different options are is very important, as is going to any attorney that has this expertise, folks, because risk-taking, I know, is a normal part of life, but not when it comes to protecting your earned assets, and you've worked hard for those. So um, I know one way you can get educated, if you don't want to talk to Mike in person right away, uh, you can uh, call the show. That's one of the options, but um, there's something coming up in December uh, on the 8th, and that's a webinar. And that's at 2 o'clock, but that sounds a little far away if someone's interested. Now, Mike, I understand you have an option. That's 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 exactly right. Uh, we do have a recording of one of our webinars, and um, and someone can just give us a call, email us. The contact is here through the Seniors Rock site, and we can provide you with a link so that you can watch the webinar uh, at home uh, sooner than the the December eight uh, presentation. That's great. And uh, it's something that you can do, like Mike said, from the comfort of your home. And you'll learn a lot, folks. You don't have to get involved. You can just do it anonymously. Uh, you do have to register, though. So make sure that you call his office or go to mrobinsonlaw.com. Or as he said, if you have questions or comments anytime about anything on the show, you can go to seniorsrockradio.com to the uh, contact page. And we check that all the time. So we love to hear from you. We'd love to know what you would like Mike to talk about or, uh, you know, what we you'd like us to have as far as guests anytime. And uh, Mike, thanks again. That was, that was really educational because I think we throw around those words, you know, just like every industry. Um, and saying wills people think wills are you know that's the be all and end all and there's so many other options so thank you for that yeah and you're right i mean we just sometimes just get caught up in in the same old same old so that's what we're trying to do is is get information out and you know we should mention uh this past thursday was veterans day absolutely and that's a big day and uh, a big day to salute our veterans and thank them and uh, you know continue to thank them every day because what a big sacrifice they've given us and uh, i know your son was in the military too right correct yeah we have two uh, two veterans in the family uh, my my son who uh, just recently uh, separated from active duty with the marine corps and uh, my grandfather was uh, in the navy in world war 2 um but uh, but that's all we we just have two uh, vets in our family. Have you were you able uh, to get stories from your grandfather about World War II? Did you have that relationship? Was he around when you were young? Yep, he was. He didn't really talk about it uh, a lot, uh, but um, he kind of kept to himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's that generation. You know, they uh, they were taught to keep things to themselves and in things in the family are private. And I heard those things from my relatives. And, uh, you know, today we're going to talk about how to bridge that a little bit because we have an author coming up in the next segment. And that's what she's done for over 40 years is helps families as a care manager. But now she's written a book as well. So, uh, Mike, I know what it's like. I think, you know, it, it's a thing. I grew up, you know, with people saying, you know, the family's business stays in the house and that's it. So it's awkward to talk about things to anyone and even your family when you were told constantly not to do it. So stay tuned, folks, because we are going to have some interesting uh, dialogue on that. And yeah, know- and this is, this is going to be a great conversation because as you and I have talked about before, you know, these are such important conversations to have, but oftentimes we just don't know how to get them started. You know, there's an awkwardness there, and so it doesn't happen, and that's not a good thing. Yes. And you know what I'm guilty of too is uh, maybe rehearsing it in my head so many times that I've 
you know, actually think I've done it. And, you know, and then I don't even bring up the subjects I want to bring up because, you know, I've kind of rehearsed it in my head too many times instead of just going for it and, uh, you know, being human and having a conversation, sitting down. And it's even harder now. We've all been separated so much with the COVID and the pandemic. So I'm looking forward to hearing Amy Cameron O'Rourke. I'm a little stuffy today, folks. Sorry about that. It is this time of year, as Pam said. and um, But I am looking forward to listening to her in a few minutes here. And, and Mike, um, any other thoughts today as far as uh, your webinar or what's happening at the firm? Uh, just, you know, we're, we're staying busy, but uh, we're still working with everybody. Um, we've, uh, you know, mostly working virtually, but we still do meet with clients for executing documents. We make sure we're doing that, of course, in a, in a safe manner. Uh, but nope, just um, continuing to work uh, to work through the, the current situation, as are so many people. Uh, but, you know, it's been great just across the spectrum of businesses. It, you know, people are making it work. And uh, I think that speaks to, to the resiliency of, of folks here in the States. You know, when the chips are down, we figure out a way uh, to, to get business done. And, and, uh, we're all continuing to do that here, here. I love that. Very good. And, uh, we're going to continue here in a few minutes or a minute or two, uh, after this break, you're listening to the seniors rock radio show on news radio, wham 1180. Did you ever ask them why? If they told you, you would die. So just look at them and sigh And know they love you Hello and welcome back to the Sea News Rock Radio Show. I am Joanna, your host, and we're here with uh, attorney Michael Robinson, who is their co-host and also um, with us and in waiting to come on is Amy Cameron O'Rourke. And I will uh, introduce her, you know, with Thanksgiving coming up, you may be anticipating spending time with your older parents, right? Having conversations on important topics such as their wishes for the future or their plans for care and support, uh, you know, as they move through the older, uh, later years um, can be difficult. So they're never easy and um, they can lead to tension and resentment, actually. So we wanted to give you some help before the holidays. And I think that's exactly what everyone hopes to avoid at this time of the year. And that's, um, you know, having controversy at the dinner table. So, Mike, I think we have a special guest. Would you like to tell us more? We certainly do. And uh, Amy Cameron O'Rourke is a nationally known pioneer and advocate for senior care in the U.S., She has been a professional care manager for more than 40 years, and she is the author of The Fragile Years. And like the Seniors Rock Show, Amy Cameron O'Rourke believes our elder years can provide really a beautiful opportunity for connection. So uh, welcome to the show, Amy. Uh, Thank you for having me. Welcome, Amy. Amy. Yeah, how did you become interested in elder care? I started working with older adults as a volunteer at a girls' club. We brought senior, brought the girls to the seniors in the nursing home, and I just fell in love with the population. I can't explain it. <laughs> That's what oh, happens it you is get bit by the, the bug. <laughs> yeah, and you're right. It's just such a wonderful community to, uh, to work with. Amy, what motivated you to write The Fragile Years? Well, I've been working with older adults for 40 years, and I've had a lot of professionals telling me, you need to write a book, you need to write a book. There's a lot of inside intelligence that you have that people need access to. So I, with much deliberation, I'm not a writer, but I'm an advocate, and I do have, I'm a retired nursing home administrator, own my own care management company for 20 years. And I just decided to bite the bullet because what I was being told was the information will be of support to older adults and their families as they're navigating uh, this time of life, which I ended up calling it the fragile years because I realized that, um, you know, you're, you're bumping along, you hit 65, you hit 70, you hit 75, and you're, you're doing great. And then something happens and you become fragile. And it's a stage similar to 
the defining stage of being a teenager or a midlife crisis at 40 or the terrible twos, I realize that people don't understand that there is a time of life that's fragile and it's a defined stage. And I think that's helpful for children working with their parents to understand so they can navigate more effectively. Amy, you know, with the families joining now for the holidays, again, a hot topic is mistakes to avoid when talking to your older parents. Can you give us some idea of which things to avoid? I can, and I think the first thing I like uh, children to think about is, are they anxious? And to know yourself well enough to know when you're really anxious and that anxiety is not supported, and by that I mean you're not talking about it and processing it, you end up defaulting into some behaviors that will be ineffective with your parents. So I'll talk about myself. When I'm anxious, I tend to move quickly. And I tend to want to get things under control. So if you have unsupported anxiety and you have a character defect that steps up uh, and takes over, know that you will be met with resistance. If you try to move quickly, if you try to get your parents to do, so unsupported anxiety is one. Two, um, I don't like the term role reversal. So I like to frame, you, you really don't reverse roles. You, you never become your um, parent's parent. What it is, is it becomes a way of communicating that's interdependent. So role reversal, I don't like because if you start talking to your parent like a child, they will become legitimately offended and it, the conversation will go downhill from there. Um, three, your solution might be bigger and usually is than your older parent is ready to swallow. I'll use an example. Um, I've had clients say, you know, my parents ready to move into assisted living. You know, my parents are ready to have, you know, a caregiver in eight hours a day. And I like children to stop and step back and take smaller solutions live with smaller solutions. The tendency is to take on a solutions that a solution that's bigger than the parent can swallow. So instead of eight hours of care a day, maybe you have some meals delivered. Maybe you have uh, someone come in and clean the house once a month. Maybe. So start in smaller sizes so that it's not so much for your parent to absorb. And I hope I'm not going too fast or throwing too no. much. You're not, yeah. but I hear the music. We're going to have to ask you to wait for us through the break here, but these are fascinating things, and I think it just makes so much sense. So thank you, Amy. If you'll hold on, we're going to come right back after the break. Folks, don't go away, and uh, we'll be back, right back on the Seniors Rock Radio Show. As soon as you are able. And welcome back to the Seniors Rock Show. I'm attorney Mike Robinson here with host Joanna Palvino. And we are joined again, if you're just uh, tuning in, uh, by nationally known advocate for senior care and author of the book, The Fragile Years, Amy Cameron O'Rourke. And uh, Amy, before the break, you were giving us some great insights about uh, mistakes to avoid when we're when we're working with older parents, uh, Amy, are there also some specific things we should avoid saying to our parents? Yes, there are, and I'll uh, yes, and I'm glad you asked the question. So, if you find yourself having an opinion and you feel very very confident that you're right in your opinion, uh, try not to say it. You know. Parents have the right to make bad decisions, and, and I put bad in quotation marks. So I would say ask a lot of open-ended questions and get a handle on where they are and what they're thinking. Um, the other is if you feel the need to do something, and, and a lot of us do, and, and having taken care of my own parents, um, and helping a lot of other children help their parents. If you feel the need to do something, learn about all the systems you're going to have to understand in short order when they 
have a medical event. You know, get a handle on Medicare, get a handle on hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, assisted living facilities, um, whatever other insurance they might have, long-term care insurance. So learn about all those systems because once they're in it, you have to really be up to speed on how each entity works and how they work or don't work together. Uh, it's really hard to learn that while your parents in the hospital and it's a very scary time. So, um, I would, I would recommend kind of getting educated and the fastest way to do that. And I'll, I'll put a plug in for the aging life care managers. Um, care management is a consulting profession and you can pay, for a consultation to get yourself ready for when your parents have an event that slows them down. And that's great advice, Amy. And I know that that we at our firm have recommended to many families that they engage a care manager um, because, as you say, it's it's professional advice and it's extremely mm-hmm. helpful to the family. A good investment. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Absolutely. And we have organizations like like Lifespan as well that'll help you to connect um, with care managers too. That's great. So Amy, great. I have a question for you. Uh, sure. You know, we, we learn a lot every week about aging and we're all aging actually. So what is one of the most surprising things about aging that most people have no idea about in your opinion? I think everyone's surprised at how their energy diminishes. You know, every decade, I think I read somewhere, your energy level diminishes 10% each decade. So you know, people are really shocked when they hit 80 and, and the thought of maybe going to Europe, they just don't have the stamina for it. And it bothers them, it makes them mad, but there they are. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's, and, I think that's one of the things I remember my dad saying a lot, I'm just, I'm just resting my eyes and that got more frequent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great point. And um Anything else uh, that you'd like to talk about when we're on this subject? I think what I would want everyone to realize, it's a lifestyle change and that it can go on for three to five years or longer and that you have to shift your life to accommodate the care that you're going to be rendering or helping to get rendered for your parents. So there's not a one and done. It's not like overnight and everything's fixed. You really have to pace yourself for the long haul uh, in order to maximize the time that you do get with your parents. You know, if you're not so stressed, you might have more meaningful moments. And that's what I would wish for anybody uh, when they're involved with their parents is getting themselves calmed down enough to to enjoy as many moments as you can, because you'll draw from them when they're gone. I love that. And, uh, you know, you're, you're right. It goes by so fast and, and it's too late when it's too late. And we talk about that all the time, the procrastinating, you know, with the state planning and so on, but what a great, great advice you you're giving and saying, think about these things, engage with your parents. Don't wait be, you know, before it's too late and, and, uh, and have regrets. So what, uh, this is terrific stuff. And, uh, folks, uh, if you'd like to get a copy of the fragile years that Amy wrote, where can they get that Amy? You can get it on Amazon. Um, just Google the Fragile Years and put my name in, Amy Cameron O'Rourke, and um, also Barnes and Nobles is carrying it. Excellent. I thank you for being a guest today. We'd love to have you come back. We'll do that soon, hopefully. And um, I wish that you have wonderful holidays yourself. I will. And thank you for the work that you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Amy. You. Thank you, Amy. That was Amy. Cameron O'Rourke and her book is The Fragile Years. Wonderful advice. And, you know, folks, I'm going to do a quick quote here. George Bernard Shaw said, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. And classes are a great great way to create yourself or maybe to prepare, like Amy said, for the future. Uh, Lifespan will help you take it on with their information and inspiration workshops. They're for older adults and caregivers. So this week you can actually register for uh, a couple of different ones. They're having virtually home care options, urban soul line dancing sounds fun, 
or Medicare updates, and there's no selling in that. So everyone's getting bombarded with Medicare information. Check that one out. And um, they're all Zoom, as I said. If you're into an in-person class, you can actually take one on email. So if you'd like to get up on what's happening with your email and get better at it, you can go Friday to Lifespan's Woke Cafe at Sibley Square. And um, if you'd like to find out more about these classes or Lifespan, go to lifespanrochester.org or call 585-244-8400. And it uh, looks like we're going to be going to break again. We'll be right back. Don't go away. <laughs> the legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. The lake, it is said, never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. And welcome back to Seniors Rock Radio. Mike Robinson here with Joanna Palvino. And uh, a great song there by Gordon Lightfoot. And Joanna, this past Wednesday was the 46th anniversary of the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Wow, that was in 1975. So, yeah, it doesn't seem very long ago, but it's certainly... Uh was uh, something else. And, and uh, I know you, you found something kind of interesting. I wanted you to share that with the listeners. Yeah. So apparently um, Gordon Lightfoot, who wrote the, the song, and it was probably his biggest hit, uh, apparently he has donated all of the profits from that uh, song to the, uh, the families of the 29 uh, fellows who, uh, who perished in the shipwreck. How cool is that? And he was a Canadian, or is a Canadian. Is he still around, Gordon Lightfoot? I don't even know. It's terrible. But anyway, assuming he is, um, he's a Canadian, and he did something like that for us Americans. That's pretty pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, just uh, that was a, a great gesture, and I'm sure that that has helped those families tremendously. That's what humanity is all about, as they say. There and um, I think this hour has been great. I've learned a lot, and I like um, what Amy O'Rourke was telling us. And, in fact, I had a class over at Lifespan this week, and it was um, you know, about some of the very subjects that we talked about today. And uh, I'll sum it up by just saying that language is very important in the way you say things and, um, and to have respect for individuals. And I'll share a couple of things that I thought were, were interesting and and something not to forget. One of them is to um, put the person first, right? So instead of saying he or she is a diabetic, um, you say that he or she is living with diabetes. So the person has, you know, you're respecting the person, not, you know, putting um, whatever their challenge is uh, front and center. And um, there's some other words. I know, Mike, I've said this to you before. We we work with a lot of folks and talk to a lot of folks that are in the senior industries with uh, the Greater Rochester Area Partnership for the Elderly and, and Lifespan and the Monroe County Office for the Aging. All of these folks that work in these industries, um, there's one word I don't like, and a lot of people say it. It's facility. Mm, and yes. yeah, I think it's it, it's just, it's too cold. And, you know, I said to the instructor at the lifespan class, who wants to put their mother or father in a facility? And she took it a bit farther and said, and who wants to be in a facility and who wants to work in a facility? So things like that are important. Those little words can, uh, you know, really change, um, you know, uh, culture, just like we're trying to do with so many other things today. Sure. No, words are powerful. And mm-hmm. um, and that's one of the things that that uh, we work on, you know, at, at our firm in terms of making sure we're dealing respectfully with people. What is the terminology we use? And um, and, you know, all of us, whether it's talking with our parents or just even with each other, you know, to be aware that, uh, you know, words have an impact and and we do need to be respectful of one another. Yes, absolutely. And a couple of the other ones were, um, well, this is more for the folks in the industry, but don't say home-like or food-like. I mean, you know, somebody doesn't want to be in a place that's like a home. They want to be in their home, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to tell the folks before we go. We're going to head out now. Have a great week, everyone. And be well, be kind. Thank you for being here today, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the show. And remember to tell us what you like to hear in future shows on the contact page on SeniorsRockRadio.com. Remember, you're why we're here. And hope you'll be with us again next week. Join Mike and I for another hour of Seniors Rock.